it's time for our next speaker, who is Brian Gronke, who is the president of our host group here at Ohio State University, the SSA at OSU. And he's going to be talking to you about how to make the best of leadership transition. So here's Brian. Thank you, Gordon. So just to give you a quick overview of uh, once my thing starts working here, to give you a quick overview. All right. All right. Just to give you a quick overview of uh, how we're going to do this. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit, a little bit about myself, uh, just who I am. A couple of, re of irrelevant things, but you know, I'll help, help you get to know me. Then I'm going to ask you guys a few questions about who you are and why you're here. And then we're going to talk about why this topic is so important. Uh, we're going to talk about you know what happened at SSA at OSU, and because we've we've had some issues with this particular topic, and. Uh, you know, how we've learned from it, and then what you can do to avoid those kinds of problems in the future and to recover from them if, you know, if it does happen to you. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a third year computer science engineering uh, student at Ohio State. Um, I really love that meme because it's ex extremely true about programmers. You're either a god or you just don't know what you're doing. Um, and then I am also an avid follower or student, I guess, of philosophy. That's Philosoraptor, for those of you who don't do internet. Um, and I, it's actually my minor, so I do a lot of, a lot of stuff with that. Uh, the way I like to put it is I think about things that nobody else cares about most of the time. So, um, and, and then I'm a devout follower, of course, of his holy noodliness, um, hence why I'm here today. And I'm a musician. I love music and doing stuff with that. Um, now, how did I get involved with SSA at OSU? Well, when I got here my freshman year, um, I was pretty new still to atheism, so my one, but I was really, really, I really liked the idea of getting involved with an atheist club. Now, it actually took a lot of work for me to find the Secular Student Alliance here. Uh, that's the first sign you know you're doing something wrong, by the way, is when it takes a lot of work for prospective members to actually find you. Um, but Right away, I knew that was kind of a problem, and uh, what I found when I got here was not exactly satisfactory, but we'll talk a bit more about that in a few minutes. All right, now a little bit about you guys. So I just want to ask you a few questions. First, just raise your hand if you are leaders or of an SSA affiliate or a non-affiliate group at your school. Okay, so most of you, good. Uh, and how many, how many of you, just raise your hand, are in the midst of, or will be having soon, a leadership transition? Again, quite a bit of you. Okay, great. And are any of you the inheritors? Raise your hand if you're an inheritor of what you might consider a bad leadership transition, or maybe a bad previous leader. Oh, lucky you. Okay, well, hopefully you guys will be the good leaders then. So why is this important? Leadership transitions are hard. They're hard for everybody. Not just you, not just me. They're hard for companies, they're hard for nonprofits, they're hard for governments. But I would say they're especially hard, perhaps even hardest, for student orgs. Because for student orgs, uh, they're very ephemeral, very transient. People are always coming in, they're always coming out. Students are very fickle. Sometimes they want to do something one week that they don't want to do the next week. So it can be very difficult to capture students' attention and maintain it for any more than like one or two years, uh, or even less than that. And so they can change very rapidly, and your transition windows for, for leadership changes are very, very short. So, you know, wh whereas a company or a nonprofit group or something like that may have months or years to slowly work a new leader um, you know, into the job. With a student org, we have months, sometimes less, so it's, it's, much, it's much more difficult. Um, and they can ruin everything. I mean, groups pretty much will just completely die, and you can go talk to any of the people at SSA National, they deal with this all the time. Probably the leading cause of groups dying out it's just because of bad leadership transitions. Either it, they go poorly and the group doesn't really ha have any organization anymore, or they just don't happen at all and you don't get any new leaders. And that's bad. The good news is they don't have to. You can do it right with a little bit of time and effort and planning. 
you can make the leadership transition go well, and your group can survive into the future. Now, SSA at OSU. We are one of the oldest SSA groups, actually. Um, possibly the first. I don't. Not, that's not entirely clear, but uh, we have a long history here. Uh, the group actually used to be called the Students for Free Thought, um, and then we changed a few years ago to be actually titled Secular Student Alliance at, at OSU. But uh, historically, we've been a pretty active group on campus. But over the course of the last two or three years, things have kind of gone a little bit off track. Uh, we had two leadership transitions, mostly with one particular leader, the one before me, that did not go particularly well. Um, and so, like, like I said before, when I, when I got to the group, I, I noticed it was pretty quiet. You know, they weren't really doing anything. And so my first goal was, I was like, well, maybe, maybe you know, things will get better as the year goes, goes on. And it really didn't. It actually got worse. <laughs> um, so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let the only atheist or you know, secular group at one of the largest schools in the U.S. just die while I'm here. So I decided to run for a leadership position, and I got elected to be vice president. Now, this, and this was, was going to be the same leader that you know, was having problems. Um, it was going to be the same guy that was going to be the president. The whole summer went by after that year, and never heard once from him. And then we were trying to contact him to no avail. I finally get a hold of him less than a week before our first meeting, and he says, "Oh, yeah, I'm no longer at OSU. I'm going to. I'm moving to you know, University of Dayton." Well, okay. <laughs> I guess now I'm president. So that's where we ended up. And so because of that and all that fiasco and madness, uh, it's been basically kind of a rebuilding process since then. So this is kind of what a bad leadership transition can do to you. It can really kind of put the club into a state of what are we doing? <laughs> Why are we doing it? So uh, that's where we are, and, and you know, we're working right now on, on recruiting and building the group back up to be much more visible and active on campus. Um, and that's kind of where we're going. <coughs> so let's look a bit at what went wrong. Poor communication, probably the worst thing that, you, that can go poorly. The president was inaccessible and unengaged. He even admitted to me on uh, several occasions that um, basically he, he liked it be, uh, to just be kind of a, his group of friends that he just wanted to, you know, to talk to or whatever, and he didn't actually want to do anything with the group. So nobody actually knew we existed really for, for a while, uh, and that was kind of a problem and no one really knew what was going on. And that was also because of poor planning. There are very few events. Events that did happen were often announced only a couple hours before, um, and so you know, no one knew what was happening. Weekly meetings pretty much had no structure or anything. It was just a bunch of mostly white males that got together and talked about random stuff. Um, so that's no good. And there was no marketing, no visibility at all on campus. I remember the first involvement fair I did when I was president, I got tons of people coming up to me, sophomores and juniors, who were saying, where, I, where was this club? I didn't know it even existed. That's bad. And there was no direction. There was no clear path of where the club was going or what we were supposed to be doing with our, um, or what kind of purpose we had. And that's hard both on transitioning to new leaders and it's hard on just the club in general for, for maintaining any kind of uh, longev longevity. But how can we improve on that? The first thing is with communication. We want to avoid redundant problem solving. Um, so that's through, you do that through record keeping, through having an advisor, and through your friends here at SSA National. They're the kind of the constants, right, in all these, this, the, the, the transitivity that, that is inherent in student groups. They're the constants that can kind of help ground the group and, and keep you going uh, in a forward direction. As Matt mentioned earlier, um, you want equity, right? You want to be able to build on your past successes, not have to redo them over and over again. So you want to be able to communicate through, um, uh, through to the next generation of leaders. Planning can really, really, really ease the pain on, the, on new leaders. So if they can go in to the next semester with an event lined up, uh, with some ideas ready to go, and having a set of goals for the year, or just the semester, 
That makes it immensely easier. I mean, when I started being, a pre uh, being president of SSA to OSU, I, I didn't know what I was doing. There was no goal, there was no plan. It was the first semester was just pretty much trying to figure that out. And that's really hard. So we want to define those goals. And that really helps with recruiting new members, because people like being part of something that they think actually has a purpose and is going somewhere. It helps with retaining current members because it maintains interest. And it helps with transitioning to new leadership because, you know, like I said, it, when you actually know what you're doing, it's much easier to you know, lead a new group. So just a few details on communication and records. Uh, you want to use online collaboration tools. I think this is actually super underrated. Um, using something like Google Drive, Dropbox, Slack, whatever, these online file organization, uh, team building kind of tools is really, really, really useful because instead of having to go through the process of you know, handing files or documents over or something physically, uh, transitioning leaders is just a matter of giving someone a password to a group account. And for something where leadership transitions are happening all the time, this is incredibly useful. Um, the next thing is choosing new leaders well. Uh, do not pick that guy. I think you all probably know what guy I'm talking about. Uh, but the, the catch is that guy can come in many forms. And yeah, and so one of the things you want to look out for is someone who you might think is very charismatic or who maybe is very uh, sociable or whatever, but they don't actually care that much about the club. You need to look for people who are invested and who are actually willing to communicate and uh, you know, actually lead the group and not just kind of be, you know, this is my friend group and I'm, we're just gonna meet every week and talk about random stuff. Um, and then uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't seen it, uh, you should definitely watch uh, Matt and Gordon's talk from earlier about delegation and getting people basically integrated into the group over time uh, just by giving them little tasks and whatnot. That's really, really important. Uh, the last thing for communication is talking to your members. They kind of deserve to know what's going on in the group. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of a basic rule, right? So in, no one wants to be part of a student org that they don't know what's going on, so that's pretty important. Uh, a couple of quick details also on defining goals. Uh, you don't need to overthink it. Uh, you don't need to like micromanage posthumously uh, for your group everything that's going to happen after you leave. Um, but you do need to have something lined up for your new leaders. And just take it one semester at a time. You know, have a plan for the, the semester after you leave, but then let them take it from there, uh, you know, the next couple semesters after that. And goals can change. When you get new members, when new people come in with new ideas and different kinds of preferences or where they want the club to go, they might change, and that's okay. Now, you might be thinking, but, but Brian, things have already gone wrong. Although I guess for you guys it hasn't, which is, that's good. But sometimes it's you inherit a bad situation like I did and need to know how to recover from it. Well, here's your first course of action. <laughs> I, I can't recommend this, but I understand if you do it, so that's okay. Alternatively, however, you can do that. <laughs> Now, this is funny, but it's also actually kind of how it works. Um, you act like you know what you're doing, and then after a while, you actually do know what you're doing. And that's okay. Now, the first thing to do is take a deep breath and calm down. Your group's not going to die because you're here, and you can do it. And the first thing you need to do after that is recognize exactly what went wrong. Was it communication? Was it you didn't have any, any records from the last, uh, the last or, uh, administration? You, you didn't have any, um, you know, any networking, any resources? Uh, what, what exactly went wrong? And then fix that. Don't let it happen again. Whatever, whatever caused you, know, you pain in, in inheriting this group, don't let that thing cause the next administration pain. And finally, ask for help. The f one of the first things I did you know, when, when I inherited the situation was I went to Nick and Gordon and I asked them 
for advice and assistance and resources, and they, you know, they're willing to bend over backwards to help me. The guys at SSA National will do that, and you should definitely utilize it. Uh, and also, if you don't have an advisor, uh, I would definitely recommend getting an advisor because they, uh, our advisor in particular, she had been pretty hands off with the group, but uh, she was pretty, uh, pretty freaked out when it seemed like no one was doing anything and it was disappearing. So, and she was very, very willing to help us, uh, you know, kind of get back on track. So that's another great source of, uh, of sort of constancy, and I would highly recommend that.